Good afternoon, evening, whenever you're seeing this class. My name is Kyle Maureen. I am getting my Master's of Arts in Teaching and endorsement in high school history and social studies. Uh, for the past eight years, I lived and worked in Washington, D.C. at a public charter high school where I taught computer applications and online media literacy. Additionally, I was um, the summer algebra teacher for three summers where I worked with students who were doing remedial uh, mathematics and getting caught up on algebra skills where they struggled. Um, so as I read the Bob Moses reading and seeing his call to action, which is this foundational algebra knowledge as an entry point to, to skills and economic opportunity, um, as really a beautiful sweet spot between my two areas of, of interest, which are social studies as a, as a means to social action and involvement, and education as a skill set to, to provide economic opportunity and, and growth for the individual as well as society. Um, I'll begin and say that my metaphors uh, for knowledge where social studies and history are concerned are really interesting because I kind of see them at the origin of these two axes. Uh, the value of hard knowledge and teaching uh, factual information as understanding primary source documents and where information comes from so we have a foundation with which to debate which lends itself to the soft uh, interpretive uh, editorializing uh, knowledge. Um, certainly at points the pure or theoretical discussion of economic theories or political trends over time um, and as well as the, my interest is in the applied information um, and the practical and context dependent understandings of why we learn history in the first place to understand from whence we came and, and grow from it and, and move on in an informed way across society, um, which dovetails nicely into my understanding of teaching and my metaphor for teaching is absolutely, um, I, I, I read myself in that definition of, of transforming and uh, transgressing, addressing marginalized social groups and the oppressed. Um, I studied uh, journalism and conflict resolution uh, in college and I was really emboldened by the idea that that great journalism can bring, uh, give a voice to the voiceless. Uh, language that, that Bob Moses even alludes to in his piece. Um, similarly, I think I've often said before, I don't, as a good, as a good teacher, I don't want devotees. I don't want to be a preacher. I want to empower young people, regardless of what they do, to understand the history um, of where they live and how they can be involved. My mentor in Washington, D.C. Um, shared with me the, the phrase, democracy is a verb. It requires action. It requires being involved. And so um, I would love to empower young people to become teachers and educators themselves and sort of the civic responsibility of, of doing and giving back to your community and having a vocational purpose. But I also would, would just as soon be helping a, a, a creative a plumber or a, or a critical thinking computer programmer. I want uh, our citizenry to be empowered and, and knowledgeable in their, in their civic education. And so understanding uh, the history of power dynamics and oppressed people in this country is, is an important way to do that and one that I really feel like in my lifetime over the last 30 years, our country has only just started to become more honest about. So I feel uh, a real onus um, and responsibility uh, to this vocational pursuit of being a history and social studies teacher. That said, I'll dive into um, my analysis of the Bob Moses reading, which was really fascinating for me. And I found his thesis uh, empowering about the, the value of math literacy as economic opportunity and, and the civil rights charge of, of today, saying that uh, on page five, he says, in today's world, economic access and full citizenship depend crucially on math and science literacy. Um, at, at a later point, he, he's valuing that hard, 
but applied knowledge when saying algebra teaches this symbolic representation which becomes a basis for computer programming and and the ways in which our world are moving today uh, demand that we we provide that kind of um, education for all students. I found it very powerful when he said, why don't we have the same kind of standards for math and science illiteracy that we do for English reading and writing illiteracy? Um, we just make excuses about why it's okay to be bad at math. And as he uh, started to get into his example of um, discussing uh, using the, the stops along the T project to teach uh, this like practical application and kind of experiential learning of, of a different way to conceptualize and understand the, the number line, which is, although linear is still pretty abstract, um, I found that incredibly powerful um, because as I have taught algebra um, over the years and continue to tutor in algebra, the basic understanding of the number line and what negative values represent is something that I find 13, 14, 15 year olds struggle with so much. They'll be able to do the procedural work of the first three lines of a um, you know, multivariable simplifying equation and then they'll get to, they'll have to divide by a negative or, or God forbid divide by um, um, a fraction or a decimal and they'll just stop. Um, and so some of those basic elements of math literacy that come before algebra are really important. Um, in that way, Bob Moses absolutely sees, I mean, his whole thesis is, is talking about how teaching is transforming society, and he makes that point about how friends and colleagues were, were, were dismissive of his interest to go to teach junior high and high school, and worried that that wasn't making enough of a difference. Uh, and I've certainly uh, had similar criticisms leveled at me throughout my 20s. And um, to me, there's a real vocational purpose in teaching and uh, not just um, how we can empower the next generation, but selfishly, I love the opportunity to have to continue learning. Uh, moving into history and social studies is now my third different discipline altogether that I will be teaching and I love the opportunity to continue to get to grow myself and it seems like Bob Moses is writing from a place where he's similarly fascinated by that charge to be um, responsible to be a, a great student himself. Um, lastly, I would say that Bob Moses's um, metaphor for literacy is um, certainly talking about power when he mentions the, um, the disproportionate few number of, of people of color are getting into the STEM fields, getting doctorates in STEM fields and um, expanding the economic potential and job opportunities for people of color that begins with these basic skills that uh, he quotes James J. Duderstadt uh, saying, the most important factor affecting long-term production of scientists is the tragic inadequacy of our primary and secondary science and mathematics education. So going back to those hard knowledge skills in an applied practical context as a way to transform society and uh, in turn change the, the power structure, it's a, a really powerful and, and grand idea. Um, I thought it was uh, interesting, too, that he noted um, the parallels between uh, this like inadequacy in education and the other uh, major social factors that are impacting uh, the African-American community and Latino community specifically. Um, although he doesn't mention it, I think the war on drugs and uh, he does mention the prison industrial complex and, and our, our problems, and I think he nicely puts, uh, puts it when he says prisons are our new plantations and, and how sad but true that is. And that is an area where, in addition to education, a public policy area that is, is of deep concern to me and one that we will need to address moving forward. Um, 
I look forward to learning with all of you, especially as a former math and science person moving into social studies. Um, I'm really interested to be with the math and science folks in this reading and writing class and uh, look forward to uh, learning from and with all of you. Thank you.